Greetings fellow humans. You know me as Iceman Caesar, and this is what's up in the world today. Last week we were talking about mental health and the Bell Let's Talk initiative, so this week I figured it'd be a good idea to talk about the physical health and just go over some things that you can do to help improve and strengthen your own physical health. These are things that I do every day to help improve my physical health and just try and keep myself as young and healthy as possible. So hopefully you'll be able to hear something that'll help you if you're struggling with your own physical health. Uh, you know, we need both aspects of ourselves to be strong and healthy, both the mental and the physical health. You know, if one, we can't have one without the other. If our mental health is good, but our physical health is bad, we're not going to be able to move forward and be the best versions of ourselves. Same thing with if it's the other way around. If our physical health is good, but our mental health is bad, we're not going to be able to move forward and be the best versions of ourselves. So, got to have both strong and healthy. Hopefully last week you was able to help you if you're struggling with your mental health. And then hopefully this week you'll find something that can help you if you're struggling with your physical health. So, let's get right into it and start right where we all start and uh, start with sleep. And just going to go through a few reminders and tips. You know, a lot of people seem to have uh, struggles with sleep these days. You know, falling asleep, staying asleep, getting back to sleep once you've been up for a few minutes. So, you know, we never, we never really taught how to sleep, so, you know, it's just, you know, something that comes naturally to everybody, but sometimes you kind of forget that, you know, if you take certain preparations, you can, it can really go a long way to improving the quality of your sleep, so a few, th a few tips, um, first thing, make sure you have, uh, you're in complete darkness, the more light that's coming in, the more awake you're going to be, and the less likely you are to get into those deeper sleep cycles that'll really help you recharge your batteries and feel refreshed when you get up instead of getting up and feeling tired. So, you know, even if even if you get a full seven or eight hours, if it's if it's too light in your room and you're not able to get into those deeper sleep cycles, you're just not going to be able to recharge your batteries enough to get up and feel refreshed. So make sure it's complete darkness, you know, blackout curtains or if it's just a small window, put a pillow up over it or something or, you know, a thick blanket, just anything to keep the light, keep as much light out of the room as possible. And, uh, and that kind of goes, the same thing goes for the bathroom, you know, invest in a little nightlight or something that just, just, just provides enough light so that you don't make a mess or anything that you can get in there, you know, get in and get out really quickly. And, you know, that shock of, you know, going from dark to light, it kind of wakes you up and gets you, keeps you from going back into some of those deeper sleep cycles that, you know, can get those last couple hours of sleep that, you know, really mean a lot <clears throat> throughout the day when you're, where you don't get them, you find yourself really tired by lunchtime, whereas if you can get those last couple hours in when you go back to sleep, you know, you, you have energy to get through the rest of the day. So, you know, the complete darkness is a, is a big, big thing to make sure that you're doing, uh, staying, make sure you're hydrated before and after you go to bed. And it's t time, sometimes it's a tough line to walk, to staying hydrated and, you know, not having enough liquids to where, you know, getting up to pee every half an hour. So, but you know, like it's just good to have a glass or a bottle of water by your bed or by your door of your bedroom when you're entering and leaving so that you can just take a sip. Every time you enter and leave, boom, sip of water. That way, at least your body's always getting something because the more dehydrated you are, your body's going to be trying to wake you up saying, look, we need, need to get some water, need some, need some water in us. So let's, let's wake up, let's go. But you know, you might not have got all the sleep that you need. So, but if you're, as long as you make sure you're hydrated, you're, you're not going to, your body's not going to wake itself up trying to get the water intake. And uh, last, last little piece of advice for sleeping is to sleep with a fan. Uh, you know, sometimes being overheated can cause yourself to get out of these sleep cycles and just not being able to get into the deeper sleep because you're not as comfortable. And, you know, as you get hotter, you be your body becomes un uncomfortable, starts to wake you up. So having that coolness from the fan can really balance things out. You know, if you need to, if you need to throw an extra blanket on to balance it out, that's fine. But just having that coolness to be, you know, hitting you sometimes can go, can go a long way to helping you stay in those deeper sleep cycles. And, uh, you know, and the, the low and the hum, the, like the low humming noise of the fan can really go a long way to kind of almost lulling you to sleep sometimes. And it gets rid of all the, all the kind of like the little cracks and pops from, you know, like just randomly around the house and just the, the random little noises that can, you know, snap you out of a sleep or it can, right as you're about to fall asleep, you hear a little noise that kind of jumps you up. But, you know, sometimes the low hum of the fan can really take a lot of those noises. So, I mean, so even if even if it's not pointed at you, it might be something to try just to see if that that low hum can you know it all, like I say it almost does lull you to sleep sometimes. So 
that might be something to try. And, you know, sleep is such an p- important part of the day. You know, like the goal is to get your seven or eight hours of sleep. You, know, you don't need more, more than that. So, you know, really try not to let yourself go crazy and, you know, just be sleeping 10 to 12 hours a day. You just don't need it. It's a, it's a waste after seven or eight. And, you know, I mean, sometimes you need, you have, you know, you put out a lot of effort and energy where, you know, you need those, you know, battery recharge and sleeps where you do have nine or 10 hours, but that's, you know, a few times a year. It's not something you do regularly. And after seven or eight hours, it's really just a waste. You know, your recharge, your body, your battery will be at hundred percent if you got into those uh, deep sleep cycles. So, you know, get, go after the goal. I know sometimes it's not, you know, people aren't able to get the full seven or eight hours. So, that's the thing. If you take if you take these preparations and just go as far as you can to making sure, you know, just everything you're doing everything you can to create the best quality of sleep. Even if you don't, if you only get five or six hours, you're going to be more refreshed than you were if you got seven or eight. And it's you know you're you're sleeping in a room that's too light. So just sleeping is very important, and some of the uh, some of these tips can really go a long way to helping improve the quality of sleep. So the next thing I'll move to, uh, next piece of advice to helping with the physical health is get, a, get getting into some kind of stretching routine. And I know stretching is, stretching sucks. It's uncomfortable. It's not fun. It's uh, but you, but it goes such a long way to helping improve your quality of life. It's just it's something that needs to be done by everybody every day. Give yourself you know one day a week to where you know you can you can relax and you don't have to you know you don't have to stretch. Give yourself a break and a day to just you know relax and chill. But for the other six days, you should really have get into a stretching routine, and it's really important before you work out. But uh, but I always but I have a stretching routine. I start as soon as I get up, you know, after you know, get up <clears throat> and get into my day, and it really just helps get rid of a lot of the stiffness and soreness that you know, like starts to build up as you get older, and keeps you from being able to do the things that you want to do. So I'm gonna turn to my friend. My friend, the whiteboard here for this one. Hopefully, everybody can see uh, can see all the diagrams and stuff. So, first stretch that I would suggest doing as soon as you get up, it's a stretch for the knees. And what that is is just kind of lower yourself onto both knees. And the goal is to try and get your butt uh, to sit on your to touch your butt to your heels. And so, but at first, there's gonna you might have a lot of tightness and adhesion around the backs of your legs. So when you're trying to get down, it's gonna re, you know you might feel some pain. It's gonna be sore, but you know just push into it as much as you can. You know don't overdo it. Listen to your body, but you know you really gotta push into that. And the goal is to get your butt to touching your heels, and that's gonna really just stretch out your knees. It's gonna you know try and flush out the fluid, the old fluid, and get some new new fluid in there. It's gonna it's gonna start to break down that adhesion. And stuff that's forming on the tendons and muscle fibers. So this is just a great way to start the day. Start the day, and also I I do it right before I go to bed as well. And you know, it's just your knees are very very important. You know, like and you don't want your uh, you don't want your knees to to you don't want to have start having problems with your knees. So yeah, trying to stretch them every day will go a long way to keeping the keeping them at the quality of them up high. So. Uh, that's the first stretch to start with your knees. Then once you get back to your feet, the, a really good stretch is just trying to touch your toes. It's a good stretch for the lower back, hamstrings, uh, calves. It just gets everything. It's just a, a good, great stretch. Now, the thing to uh, one of the most important things to remember when stretching is breathing. Never, never hold your breath because when you breathe, when you hold your breath during activities or stretching and things like that, it puts a lot of unnecessary pressure on your heart and you do not want to be putting any more pressure on your heart than you have to. So always, always, always be breathing, you know, big deep breaths if you can in through the nose, out through the mouth. And when you're pushing into these stretches as you breathe in and breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth, that's where you're going to promote the elongation in the muscle. So it's, it's really, really important to be breathing, especially as you're pushing in and trying to increase the stretch. You know, really just try as hard as you can to get that big deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth because that's going to promote the elongation. So for touching your, for trying to touch your toes, just go, you know, give it, give it uh, two or three attempts, you know, and make sure you're making sure you're breathing. Try to touch. If you, if you already have the flexibility to touch, try and reach even, reach past, reach through your legs and pat and past your feet backwards so that you're kind of pulling yourself, pulling yourself backwards and but just as much as much as you can kind of get that forward flexibility as you can it's a really great stretch to start out with and then once you're once you've done your two, two or three attempts just kind of when you to get back to standing position just kind of 
roll it up to standing like that and really kind of just really lean into that rolling rolling part because that's going to roll your spine up properly and you know if you try and just stand up and don't without rolling it up you, you stand more of a chance of kind of straining something or pulling something so always always roll it up back to the start and that'll be that's a really good start uh, stretch to start the day so then at that point you know you can uh, i don't know what your routine is you know hit the washroom or whatever you do but so after the next thing on the routine would be getting into the actual, like an act, the actual stretching routine, and start it out with these standing goalie stretches for your adductors. And what you do for this one is just stand with your feet apart like this, and just uh, center center yourself and get your take a deep breath to steady, and then just lean to a, lean to the right and try and touch your toes. Take you know two or three attempts at trying to touch, trying to touch your toes, making sure to breathing the whole time in through the nose out through the mouth excuse me to promote the elongation in the muscles do that for about five to ten seconds then kind of roll it back up to the center take a deep breath in, take a deep breath to center yourself do the same thing on the left roll it back up to the center you know and just as i said before it's it's really really important i'm going to be a broken record here but it's really really important to be breathing the entire time in through the nose out through the mouth because that's going to promote the elongation in the muscle and it's not going to put the unnecessary pressure on your heart and so you do that to the right and to the left then also once you once you got to come back to center and steady yourself again then go forward try and bring your hands to touch to touch the floor in front of you and just five to ten seconds there and then this one just be careful on this one trying to roll it back up might be a little tough might have to really might have to really focus on uh, strength focus on flexing your legs but just roll your rolling yourself back back up to the center position and that's gonna be a great stretch series of stretches for your adductors your groin and at the same time your lower back it's it's really gonna help stretch that out so so start with that and then Next stretch we move to, same thing, except this time now seated on the ground. So sit, sit on the ground, spread your feet as far apart as possible, and then go through the same thing. Center, take a deep breath to steady yourself, and then go to the right, try and touch your toes. About five to ten seconds, making sure to breathe the whole time, in through the nose, out through the mouth, to promote the elongation in the muscle. Do that to the right, come back to the center, then do that to the left. Do everything, do everything again, making sure you breathe, come back to the to the center, steady yourself, then go forward. Same thing, making sure to breathe, come back to the center. And that is just, let's say it's gonna, like a lot of times we, when we're stretching, we ignore our adductors and our groin. And that is one of the main, th that is one of the main things that can start causing problems. So it's good to get them stretched out. And it also is a really good stretch for the lower back. I mean, I don't, th I think a majority of people these days have problems with the lower back. So these are really good, these are really good stretches to start the day off with. Just get rid of that, that soreness and tightness that can, that starts, you know, that, you know, getting off, grunting and groaning, doing basically everything. You can't get off the couch, you know, like doing these stretches regularly will kind of get, I mean, as you get older, grunting definitely makes it easier. So, you know, you're probably not going to get rid of that, but like, but you're almost doing it because you want to, instead of actually you know, having to grunt, groan to get off the couch. So these stretches will go a long way. Next, next stretch to move to, uh, you'll be on, seated on the ground, on the ground. So just lie back. Now uh, this one, you'll need either a towel or a band or a rope or something like that. Cause it's pretty, it's kind of an intense stretch, but it's such a good stretch and it gets stretches a bunch of muscles at the same time that I really wanted to add it in there. And it's, well, that's the thing. You can make it easier by using a towel or a band or a rope or whatever you need to use. But just lying on your back, you bring one leg up like this in the air and try and keep your other leg as close to the ground as possible. At first, you're not going to be able to really keep it to the close to the ground at all. It's going to be, you know, they're both pretty, going to be pretty close in the air. But as much as you can, keep the leg, the leg like an open scissors like that. And then just wrap the towel around this foot that you have in the air. And when you're ready, in, in through the nose. And then as you're breathing out, bring it down towards you. Then when you're holding that stretch, just... Big deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth to promote the elongation and just kind of hold that stretch there. You know, give it about, give it two or three attempts. So, you know, five to ten, se ten seconds duration. Let it go. It didn't do that both sides. Remember, you know, same thing, breathing the entire time. And, uh, 
and you know using the band to make it easier eventually you'll be able to use just reach up and use your hands to pull down your feet so when I started I had to use something to pull and now I can get now I can actually grip my heel and pull it down so you'll you'll be able to get there as well if you can it's it has got, I used to have lots of problems with my hamstrings and ever since I added this stretch in it's just I really move moved so so much forward I wish I'd been doing it the whole time but so it's a really great stretch use use the towel or band or anything if you have to and uh, and then both do that on both sides and then once once you've done that bring you can lie lie flat again and this this next stretch is called the figure four stretch and this one is a great stretch for the sciatic area the where the piriformis is and you know your glutes and everything and this is you know this is another Another stretch that'll take care of an area that really causes a lot of pain and soreness and problems for people during throughout the day. So what you're gonna do is, is as you're lying flat, you bring one, you slide one foot up so your foot's on, foot is flat on the ground and your knee is up, and then you bring your other leg, you slide your other foot up to the same way so that both of your knees are up like that. You take this foot and you place the foot on this thigh so that you're in a kind of a figure four you see like that and now this is another one you'll need the towel or the band for you put the towel through the little hole that's created by the by putting your foot on your knee on your thigh here wrap it around grab it with grab the other end with your hands and then just pull it towards you eventually you'll be able to reach your hand through the little hole whoops erased everything you'll be able to re reach your hand through the little hole and then pull it towards you that same thing I, I couldn't I couldn't reach my hands when I started but now I can reach my hands and pull it the entire way so you'll get there as well and I, I one I used to have a lot of pain and tightness in the sciatic area but once you start doing this stretch boom it's like night and day and you'll just wish you'd you'll you'd be mad at yourself that's something this easy you could have been doing to get rid of it the whole time so uh, it's kind of a tough to explain hopefully Hopefully I was able to explain it properly. I'm gonna go through eventually and actually go through and show, go through the stretches myself, so I can, so people can actually see what I'm doing. But you know, if if what I just said didn't really make sense and you don't really get the idea from the diagram, just search in uh, Google or um, uh, Figure Four Stretch Piriformis, and this this stretch should come up, and then you, you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. So, but that's another great stretch to do. You know, the same thing you can do while you've been while you're on the ground and so that and so that finishes everything on the ground and then you can move into the last set of stretches now these stretches are really important before uh, exercise so uh, you know if you're if you know you're gonna be exercising later in the day you can kinda save these three for before your exercise uh, but if you're going to be exercising pretty quick after you get up, then you can add, add them in right after this or on days where you know you're not gonna maybe get a, a lot of exercise in if any throw them in it throw them in uh, right after these in the morning because it's taken me a while to explain but really to do all these together if you just go through them especially once you get used to them you can do them in 15 20 minutes and that 15 20 minutes will imp it's, will improve your quality of life so much that it just it won't be anything that it won't seem like a chore at all to do them uh, but so this last this last set uh, starts with a stretch for the quads and now I have a couch that's perfect to where I can just hang the back of my leg on it, back of my hang my foot back on it, and it just provides the perfect height to get a, a great stretch on my quads. But excuse me, if you don't have a couch, you'll find a table or a chair or just anything that's solid. You can anything that's solid that you can kind of reach your foot back and hang your foot off like this. Hopefully, this one was hard for me to draw. I'm definitely no artist, so I apologize, but. What you like the way you stretch your quads is you like for this one. So you reach your foot back and kind of hook, hook your foot on the edge of whatever the couch or the table or something, so that one, one leg is up bent and the other is standing straight on the ground. And then once you have your once you have your foot solidly hooked back, just then you just lean back and you get that really really good stretch right in your quad there. And uh, it's it's just a perfect stretch for the quad. Hopefully you have something that you can hang your foot off of. Hopefully you get what I'm talking about by this. But it's just it's a perfect stretch for the quads, and it really lets you kind of sink into it and then lean back and get the maximum stretch for the quads. So that's a good that's a good stretch to start with. The second one is for the hamstrings, and this one is going to be a three position stretch. Uh, 
hamstrings can be pretty tight and sore to stretch so uh, you know you definitely don't want to just go to the maximum position and do it right from there or else you're really gonna run into pain and soreness and you know it, it might you might kind of pull something in the process so you you just want to ease into your hamstring stretch and to get the maximum elongation out of it so uh, the best kind of hamstring stretch is to find if you have hopefully you have a set of uh, set of stairs in your house or just something that you can balance like extend your foot on and balance and really push up against that's not going to move uh, and so what you want to do is just have one flat one <clears throat> one foot on the ground and you so you'll have it one foot kind of pointed away from you and you will extend your other foot forward and and push it into this and push it into the stair and so you kind of want one heel cutting into the cutting into the instep of your uh, of your foot on the ground and that that's going to put you in perfect alignment to stretch your hamstring properly so it's like so once once you get your once you get your one foot on the step kind of trying to follow the line down and just line it up with the instep of your foot on the ground that's going to be pointed that way so one foot's this way one's that way and you want to kind of line the heel of your one foot up with your instep hopefully you kind of get what i mean and then so from on that position and then your hand so you have three hamstrings so it's a good idea when you're go pushing into the stretch to do one to the center one to the right one to the left and remember the whole time big deep breaths in through the nose out through the mouth to promote the elongation in the muscle and then and then so once you've gone once you've done that for about five seconds and five to ten seconds in this position then just move your move this foot on the ground move this foot that's on the ground move it back a little bit into kind of a middle position not to not to the not close to the to the edge of to your limit but kind of in the middle and just go through those set, uh, go through the stretches. Same thing, middle, right, and left. In through the nose, out to the, through the mouth. Breathing the whole time to promote the elongation in the muscle. And just and so go through that. And then for the last one, you really want to challenge yourself and really want to try and push that elongation of the muscle and try and just get it get your increase your flex flexibility as much as possible. And so, excuse me get that back foot back to wherever you figure out where your limit is get that back foot back to it and then really sink into the stretch this one's going to be tough it's going to be tough in this position to take these big deep breaths but you just it's so so important because it's going to promote the elongation in the muscle and it's not going to put pressure on your heart and it's really going to help you increase your flexibility so i just like the most important thing is the most important thing is making sure you can breathe during these stretches so make sure you put yourself in a position to where you're not you're not straining so much that you can't take your breaths properly and so these going through this stretch for the hamstrings will go a long long way to helping improve your improving your quality with it if if you're having trouble because i know it did for me i was having a lot of problems and it's really gone a long way to help me and last last stretch this is an easy one but it's really it's really necessary as well and this is a stretch for the calves and as this is really simple you all you got to do is f find a corner in any room and just w come over to it and flex your foot up like this hopefully you can kind of see what I mean here flex your foot up and push it into the corner so that it's your your heel is almost kind of parallel with the, or vertical with the wall I guess <laughs> hopefully. Um, but push your heel, push your foot right in there, and then just lean into it. And kind of stand up straight, really lean into it, and you're really going to feel the pull uh, right along the back of your calf. But this is a, it's a great stretch for the calves. It's kind of tough to stretch them, but they, they have a big, important job, and they need to be stretched, and they can give you a lot of problems if they start to get dysfunctional. So uh, definitely don't ignore this stretch. You know, just find a corner, flex your foot up, and just really push into it. Five to ten seconds, making sure to take those big, deep breaths to promote the elongation and then and then you're done so so that's the thing uh, so I can, you can kind of break break them down into what for when you for when you start your day six days of the week no matter if you're working out or not I would I would definitely do all six of these things to start your day these things you could do within probably 10 minutes like definitely not not tough to do and if you and if you're gonna be exercising maybe kind of save these last three to before right before your exercise it's gonna this will get everything stretched out loosened up so that you're ready to go for your exercise and nothing's gonna be kind of wanting to tighten or tighten up or strain or anything like that so 
But if you know you're not going to be doing any activity that day, maybe just throw, definitely throw these in anyways, just to kind of get, just to keep that stretch going, to promote that elongation in the muscle, and just increase your flexibility. Because this, doing all these things, this is what's going to fight against the pain and the soreness that comes with with getting older. And that you know, as you know, you'll be able to do a lot more of the things you want to do if you fight against getting older and this is the way to do it so you know uh, you know I'm sure a lot of people do do a lot of these already but you know if you don't have a stretching routine or anything this is a good solid solid foundation these are some every single one of these is something I do every day I mean this isn't my exact this is close to my exact routine but not but not quite because I've been doing it for years and years and years now but I just wanted to kind of break things down to or, to an easy just an easy to get into routine that you that anybody can start right away but it's really really stretching is really really important so hopefully I gave everybody a kind of good template and foundation to start off with for this so say goodbye to my friend the whiteboard and move on to move on to the next uh, little uh, thing that you can do to try and keep your uh, physical health strong and that is food and water intake. Um, definitely make sure you're drinking water every day. The more active you are, the more the more water you're going to be bringing in. So that kind of you know, it's both things help each other. Um, but you know, you always it, don't. I, it's kind of funny and weird advice, but I would say don't focus on trying to force your, force yourself to drink. Always drink a certain amount of you know glasses of water every day or something. You know. Really, you can really monitor your water intake on the color of your pee. It's true. I know it sounds funny and weird, but it's true. So, <clears throat> your pee is supposed to be pretty much clear, just be a faint straw color. That is the best, you know, that's the best version of your pee, I guess. So, you know, monitor it like, monitor as that. Like, when you have that, that clear pee that's got that faint straw color, you are hydrated and you're good. You don't need to force feed yourself water. But, you know, if you have that... The more yellow your pee is, then the more that dehydrated you are. And you know, you should if you, you know, if you go to the bathroom and you see, a, you know, a lot of yellow pee, go have a couple of glasses of water. And you know, sometimes that'll that'll you know get rid of it, and you'll be, you know, your body gets the hydration it needs, and you'll be good to go. But water is the is essential for life. It is something that we absolutely need, and you know, I think we definitely neglect in our society today so always make sure you're drinking a lot drinking water every day and just really but don't you don't have to force feed yourself gallons or glasses just you know really judge by the color of your pee that's my advice so and uh, for food intake <clears throat> I know it's tough because it's tough to do but try and be as try and shop as organic as possible I mean, I know the organic is ridiculously expensive, and it's, it's, I mean, it's basically a specialty item. How crazy is that? I mean, food that is, you know, naturally produced and not, you know, trying, trying to produce it with, without the preservatives and things like that, like, just, like, doing it the right natural way is, like, this specialty item and this overly processed crap where they just do anything they can to mass produce it, and it's just, like, that you know that's i know so i know it's hard to to shop organic you know especially with you know a lot of people don't have barely have the money to sh to buy buy the processed stuff as it is never mind start to choose organic and stuff like that so i know how hard it is and i'm not i'm just saying if you're in the position definitely try and be uh, shop as organic as possible because that's where we need to move as a, as a society and you know as we move there we're going to need to change our expectations and the way we way we expect certain things because you know like to the only like to be able to mass produce things and to have something ready at our fingertips at every second of the day no matter what it's like we never have to wait and everything nothing's ever sold out you know we always have it's like we're gonna have to change our expectations to where some things are going to be sold out some items can't be mass produced without cruelty or without you know pumping them full of just just awful gmos and and preservatives and stuff that's making us sick and unhealthy it's like we're gonna so we're gonna have to identify these things and you know like sometimes we'll be able to have them they'll be in stock and sometimes they won't so, but if we're going to move to a, the best version of society and allow, try and get people to be the best versions of themselves and the strongest and healthiest, they're going to need this, the best kind of food and stuff. And they're, they're going to need the organic food. And we, we need to, if we're going to eat animals, then it needs to be without cruelty. Like, and so that means we're going to, some of these, I mean, 
some of these fast food things are gonna not gonna be able to be be produced as regularly because it's just you can't can't do that without cruelty and we're not going to be a society that does things with cruelty so we're going to have to change our expectations especially those of us that have grown up in this society where everything's always been at our fingertips but but i really feel like we are going to be we are going to be able to get there and if and if we're all working together there's going to be more way more organic options and just it's if we're all working together for the same goal it's not going to be as hard and we're not going to go have to go as without as we might think so but that's a, it's a really important thing to try and eat as organic as possible and because that's going to be the things that keep your body in the best you know it's going to the best fuel for your machine that's going to make it get allow it to have the peak performance so food is very important fruit and vegetables i know it's been preached our whole lives and you roll your eyes i certainly did but you know as i've got older i've and you know once i once i went to massage college and massage see that's the thing at our, our massage therapy college Wellington College of Remedial Massage Therapy in Winnipeg definitely highly recommended. It's you. It'll, it changed my life so much. It'll change yours. So if you have any interest in massage therapy, definitely check out their websites or track them down there. It is a great, great place, and you'll have a great, great experience. But one of the things I learned with how much information they packed into us and how they really broke down exactly how the body works, I just realized how valuable fruits and vegetables are to, are to our bodies it's like when your body when your body takes in food and it starts to you know break it down it is searching for these vitamins and all these all the good things that are in fruits and vegetables that help your body function at a high level you're like that's the thing your body goes after them and you know like it, it craves these things and, it, and these things are essential to your body systems working properly it's like i mean you're gonna, you're not gonna, be, you're not gonna be able to get even close to 100% of yourself without bring, without bringing in these things that your body needs. So even though you can get through the day without fruits and vegetables, you're not even close to functioning at 100%. And if you did bring in fruits and vegetables, it's like you'd probably feel so much better and you have more energy to do things, and things would be, it would just things would be easier. And you know, brain like these things help you like. The fruits and vegetables and just other breads and stuff, they have fats and things in them that your brain runs on fat. Your brain eats fat. If you cut fat out completely out of your diet, then you're just then you're gonna be walking around with, you know, just not very intelligent because your brain runs on fat. So you have to provide your brain with healthy fats. And those are coming from those are coming not so much healthy fats, you know, from fruits and vegetables, but things that your that your body needs are coming from fruits and vegetables and, and focusing on on knowing what your body needs and always bringing that stuff in is going to bring in things your body your brain the, the healthy fats your brain needs and things but so you know for for me i'm not a huge you know fruit is a snack person i'm it's not it's not something i'm able to do easily so for but for me my fruit intake is always before right before i work do my workouts and fruit is such a great is such great workout feel you don't need any pre-workouts or anything you know go 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 buy your favorite fruit from the store you know i'm guilty of buying the plastic container fruit i, I recycle it after but it's just so easy you know you buy it and right before just get a handful mash it in and it's like oh it just you can feel you can almost feel your body ripping it apart and taking the vitamins and all the all the great stuff from it as you're working out and it just gives you a different kind of energy than than things so it, like fruit to me like i really suggest people like if you have trouble adding fruit into your into your routine try it try it using it as fuel right before your workouts because it's it really excuse me it really goes a long way to helping make a great workout and you're it gives yourself the stuff excuse me give yourself gives yourself what your body needs so I mean it doesn't even if you don't like fruit your body needs fruit so you got to just you got to find some way to, to get it into your routine and using it as fuel for workouts is a great way I think uh, vegetables for me uh, my vegetables are usually done with my supper it's usually the first thing that I eat just just destroy the vegetables get them out of the way you know and just anything you know the vegetables are really just are really changed for me getting a vegetable steamer because then you know it's just put the water in vegetables in hit a button boom after you know after a certain you know after you're finished uh doing everything else for supper you got your vegetables ready you know you can if you want to give yourself a little treat add a little butter but you know some most of the time just just grab them out of there once again mash them down 
Get them out of the way. Do it first. That way, because it's much easier <clears throat> to make yourself eat the good stuff at the end as it is to eat the stupid vegetables. So just mash them out of the way at first. Get them in there, and you're just gonna. It's gonna go such a long way to allowing you to stay healthier. Like vegetables are a really, really big important part of keeping your immune system strong. So just you know, peas, carrots, asparagus, Brussels sprouts. Uh, broccoli, just absolutely everything, just vegetables you can get in there, throw it in the steamer, boom, mash it down, and you, you're getting what your body needs, and it goes a long way to keeping yourself healthy and strong. So fruits and vegetables are a really big part of it, even though it sucks, because, you know, it's not fun to eat them, they don't taste particularly great, fruit, do, fruit does, but I mean, it's just not really, it's, sometimes it's a real chore to eat them, but it's, it's really important, so hopefully you find a way to add both into your routine if you don't already. Um, and so next, and then moving to the next thing, uh, might as well go on from, if you're using fruit as fuel for exercise, let's talk about exercise. And you know, there's lots of things that you can do for exercise, but the one, whatever you choose, you have to make sure that it challenges you. You have to make yourself, you have to create discomfort because as I talked about uh, last week in last week's video, discomfort equals change equals progress. So if you have, if you're trying to hit your weight goal, the more discomfort you create in your workouts, the more, the more change that you're going to get and the more progress that you're going to get. I don't know. I'm not, you have to be careful to find that line to be, find that line between creating discomfort and overdoing it because it is a, it can be a fine line and it, you do not want to overdo it because you'll burn yourself out and take yourself right out of your routine so you just got to you got to push yourself to a level of discomfort but know your limits know when it's too much and but it, but at the same time when you so back it down if it's too much but remember you don't want to back it down too far because you want to push yourself as much as you can so that you get the you get the maximum results out of your workouts. So whatever you choose, running, walking, I mean walking is tough. Walking is good for maintaining a way it's tough to actually use it to move forward towards a goal. So if you're trying to if you're trying to draw, like lose body fat, walk, walking's a tough one, but uh, there's things you, there's you know there's ways to make thing, make it harder and to increase the Increase the workouts and stuff like that. So, but whatever you do, you gotta have that level of, you have to create that level of discomfort. And so, I'm gonna give a few suggestions for workouts. First thing I'm gonna suggest is a program called DDP Yoga. And DDP Yoga is uh, kind of a, it's kind of a yoga program. It just takes like the meat and potatoes of yoga, like the positions and the movements, and gets rid of like you know like the the chanting and just the ridiculous mumbo jumbo stuff. And just just the meat and potatoes of it, like the the positions and the and you know like move, and the way some of you do some of the movements. It's like those are great for strength and flexibility. So he takes he takes those and adds in a little bit of a calisthenic theme to things. And combining those things creates just an one of the probably the greatest workout I've ever come across. And it it just goes so does so much for increasing your flexibility, and at the and at the same time you're burning fat, you're building muscle because to hold yourself in these positions, you're 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 and to create to to create give your body the energy to hold yourself in these positions and to go through some of the motions, your body's burning fat because that's what fat is stored energy. So you're when you're in these when you're in these positions, your body's going after your stored energy, and it is just destroying it, breaking it down, taking the energy from it, and using it to try and go, do this workout. But at the same time, you know, your body, you're, you're using your body weight to build your muscles. So your muscle is not only trying to, your muscle fibers need to build strength to be able to hold yourselves in these positions and to move through it. So now your muscles are building themselves. And so it's, it's, doing, it's, it's doing a two-pronged two attack. It's burning your fat, and at the same time, it's building your muscles. So you're getting that tightness and toning with the build, with the building of the muscle, and you're losing that body fat, and just lo lo you know losing all the flub, and just get all that stuff is being just it's being destroyed by the body and turned into energy because that's what it is stored energy. And workouts like DDP Yoga target that stored energy; they go right after it, and that's why it's such a great thing. And it also at the same time increases your flexibility. So if you're doing these stretches that I 
that I showed that I just showed. If you're doing these to start the day, when you get into DDP yoga, you combine those things, your flexibility is going to go through the roof. Your strength and your the strength in your muscles is going to go through the roof. You know, and it's. Uh, the energy you have to do these workouts is going to go through the roof. So it's it's really I don't have any connection to DDP yoga other than I do, I found you know I do it myself. I've done it for over five years. It has done so many great things for me that I just tell everybody that I can about it because it's such it's it works if you put your if you do it it works and it's you know it it can help you stay stay young and fight off aging and old and getting old. So I just. I, I really, really feel strongly about it, and I always promote it to any, to everybody as much, as much as I can. And the other great thing about it is that it builds your muscle entire compartments at a time. Like you have your, the posterior compartment of your legs and your arms and stuff, and it builds these things in conjunction. It's not just isolating one muscle going through that action and building it. It's using your hamstrings, your calves, and your quads and your adductors all at the same time to stabilize your leg, and then to move your leg, and then to or to twist or to rotate. It's using all these muscles in conjunction. That's what, your body wants to do. That it it was created to be able to use our muscles together to do things like run and jump and lift. So when you're so a workout like DDP yoga, it combines all these things to be using your muscles entire compartments at the same time. And and it just promotes the it promotes your muscles functioning together. It allows you to be stronger and fat and just have more get more control of your muscles in your body. So I mean, I I you know it might sound like DDP yoga is too good to be true, but it's it really isn't. It's one of those. It's the exception to that rule. It is such a great thing, and it will go such a long way to keeping you from becoming an an old you know a hunched over old man that's grunting and groaning and can't get off the couch and can't do anything. I mean, as I said before, you're you're as you get older, you're gonna grunt. You know, I mean, groaning makes it easier. <laughs> grunting makes it easier. So I mean, you get, those things are good, but. I just mean being forced to hunch over and being forced to uh, 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 like though that stuff is that stuff is mostly taken care of with the with DDP yoga and combining it with things like stretching and and stuff like that. So DDP yoga is a great one to do. It's an it's an app now, so you can download it right on your phone or your tablet or anything. Take it anywhere you go. They they don't just have the the like the few workout like you know like the eight to ten workouts that were on the DVDs. Now they've They've increased it to just, I don't even know how many workouts there are. There's just uh, so, tons of workouts now, uh, workouts uh, specifically designed for age groups, 55 plus, or for, you know, for certain certain things or dysfunctions or just, there's so many workouts geared towards basically almost anything you can think of. It's just, it's, just, it's and it's an you know, affordable subscription rate. It's just really, really a great, a great tool in helping you helping you battle and have a great have a high quality of your physical health so i really highly recommend it i track it down ddpyoga.com is where you can get all that information for them but it's uh it's a really great thing i highly recommend it and i don't don't think that you'd be disappointed if you invested in it yourself so that's a good thing to, that can be a good workout another thing another good workout is i've never been a huge fan of the treadmill so but if you're a fan of the treadmill and you love running, you know, running can be a great high for people and a great release. So, you know, definitely, definitely find a good running path or a good treadmill that you can, you know, get on and have a good running routine on. But for me, I more, I more gravitate towards the ellipticals, just it's less wear and tear on the joints and you can kind of control, you know, speed and things a little bit, a little bit better. And in the last few years, I've uh, I've really learned that you know the higher the resistance is, the more it focuses on like your actual belly flub, that stored energy, and you know it bit and it really has done and gone a long way in building and strengthening my legs and hips and stuff like that, and you know alternating and that's good. You can also alternate it alternate between you know rotating forward and then at the same time then you can switch it up to rotating back and that just targets different muscles and so but if you're going to choose the elliptical and you want to get rid and your goal is to get rid of the belly flub and and your your the you know that flubby flubby stored energy that's all over the body higher resistance ellipticals are going to target that and so but the, th the main thing you want to do is you don't want to overdo it you don't want to like Love push you. yourself too far too fast and because uh, you're gonna you're gonna burn yourself out, and you're not gonna be able to you're gonna fall right off of your routine. So uh, just make sure make sure you start slow, set yourself a limit, and then work up from there. Um, 
you know, 20, start at 20 minutes if you have to. 20 minutes at a certain resistance, and then once that gets easy, move it to 25. If that's too, if you find it's too too much, move it to 15. Or you know, instead of moving to moving up the time, increase the resistance. But it's just you got to focus on every. You got to focus on both things. The uh, you got to you got to focus on the resistance to tar target the belly flub, and uh, and then, yeah, that's saying sorry, lost, oh, almost lost my train of thought. But don't over like don't. That's the, the key thing is to don't overdo it. To make sure that uh, you set your limits, and because if you if you try and go too hard too fast, you will burn out. You'll get out of your routine, and you won't be able to move. You won't be able to move forward with it. So start slow, set your limits, and then you know just listen to your body and move move forward as you go on from there. Music is a big key. Uh, definitely, I wouldn't be, I would not be where I am with my workouts and stuff if it wasn't for music. So make sure that you make sure that you have some kind of music. I know music is getting harder to obtain these days. It's getting really expensive and stuff like that. Uh, but so one of the, another one of the things that I would suggest is uh, Spotify. It's a great program you can download. It's a subscription based, but once again, it's affordable, and you can. It just has millions of songs on your. You're right at your fingertips. I want. I don't have any connection to it. I just got it from my dad, and it's just been a really great thing. It's like I say, millions of songs right there at your fingertips. It helps you, uh, and it's uh, it's a, it's affordable rates. So, but music is such such a important part of working out that. Uh, it's it's gonna it, you know it helps take your mind off of the time and it just makes it just allows you to have a little bit more happiness during I mean you're not gonna I, like I say you got to create discomfort so you're never really gonna have like true happiness during a workout but like you just get like if you've got with the right music and when you're in the right routine and you're feeling good man you can just get on there you will find a level of happiness that you kind of haven't found with anything else but music is a key spotify is a great app there's other apps out there that provide you know music like that with their own play spotify has its own playlist you don't have to worry about setting up your own or anything like that you just find one that find one that looks good and then rock and roll you know like i say millions of songs from all all genres all decades of music so um uh, music is uh <clears throat> music is key uh you know so like those those three things are really important you know set your limits don't overdo it and you know set, don't overdo it set your limits and then work up from there music is key make sure you have music make sure you always have water you're taking taking a, a good sip of water at least every 10 minutes throughout your workouts to keep yourself hydrated and you know that's but that's you combine all those things together you should be able to put in a great workout on the elliptical regularly and it goes a long way to you know pushing you towards your fitness goals uh, don't leave out, don't ignore weight training. Weight training is a really great way to burn fat. I know people, when they think burning fat, they don't think of, you know, weight training. They think running, walking, or ellipticals, things like that, biking. But weight training is a great way to burn fat. Because when you're, because your body, when to be able to create the... Be able to create the strength to move to move that weight. Your body is burn needs to burn that stored energy to be able to move so that your muscles can move that weight. So, don't ignore weight training. It's a great way to to strengthen yourself as well as burn fat. Uh, if you, you know if your goal is not to set records and be all big and jacked up, then just you know just change your approach to it. Instead of pushing you know heavy weights as, for as many reps as you can, you're doing or you know instead of pushing the heavy weights. You know, as well, you know, as as yeah, as many reps as you can. You you, you said you focus on uh, lower rates, l lower reps, lower weight with higher reps. So that in the lower weight with higher reps is going to get that tight and toning uh, result that you want. And whereas higher <clears throat> trying to push the higher weight for as much as you can is going to get is going to increase you know get you big and bulky increase the strength that way so it's just weight training weight training is good for whatever your goals are it just depends on what you want to what you want to accomplish so definitely don't ignore it you know add it into your team whatever uh, based on whatever your goals are and, uh, and then moving on to the last uh, the last aspect of it you know after you've done your workouts and everything the shower now I know 
shower wouldn't seem like something that's very important in the grand scheme of things, you know, for your physical health other than staying clean and not being dirty. But it really, really, really is a huge, can be a hugely important part of not only your physical health, but your mental health as well. But I'll get to that. And so the reason why showers are so important is because the way that we should be well, the way that we should be doing them is we should be having contrast showers. What a, what a contrast shower is is going from one from a hot to cold, the contrast. So and the reason why that is so important is goes back to massage college. One of the things one of the things that I learned that always stuck with me throughout the years was. Uh, was the fact that going from one temperature extreme to the other promotes a faster healing response in the body. And I don't know, that always I always stuck with me going forward and and once I started learning more about, you know, the body and life and getting into my own workouts, I really realized why that was so important. And you know, and that's so that's the thing, you know, as we're out in our daily lives and we're, you know, we're working and excuse me. We're working and are doing our workouts and stuff we're doing damage to our bodies like we're to use our muscles and stuff sometimes sometimes our muscle fibers rip and tear sometimes our tendons you know stretch sometimes we you know we get bumped into things and we adhesion starts to build on our muscles and stuff like that so all the things that create the the soreness and stuff like that and the pain that we experience on our muscles and things that stuff all that stuff all builds up and then we go into our showers a lot of people we only we only folk we only leave it on hot so it's everybody only has a hot shower you start it hot you, in the middle is hot and then you finish hot and so that's only it's putting your body only in one one state it's only so it's like you're only having that one temperature you're never getting the contrast to the other so you're never promoting a healing response in your body and and there's a lot of areas that do need the healing so so by and by staying hot you know and how it has the effect on the mental health you think like what do they say when people get mad or they're always you know like just reacting strongly to things they're a hothead you know cool down man so it's like so you think that you know, like if you're always have that hot water and that just always hot, 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 hot pouring on your body and your head and everything, it's going to be a lot easier for you to stay in that, you know, an angrier, negative place and, you know, stay and get, you know, it's just, if the, if the anger is coming from there, if you're, if that's all that you're being exposed to, it's going to be really easy to stay in that spot. However, if you start like I did eight plus years ago when I finally, I kind of, a light bulb clicked on and I started doing it but at, at the once I was finished you know like doing the soap and everything like that shampoo and everything right before I was gonna shut it off I said I decided you know what I'm gonna give myself a good blast of cold and I did and uh, you know the the difference that you feel after you do that is just so so intense that you know you'll wonder why you why you never did this before and you know like that's the thing I was, you know, you, you're more wide awake. It's like, you're more wide awake. And once you get out of the shower, you warm up more. It's like, it, it's weird. You think that you'd, by do, be, putting that cold blast, you'd be colder. But no, you warm up more. It's almost like you can think clearer, you know. It's like, you 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 lose you lose a lot of the anger and stresses that you were maybe stressing about that was, you know, maybe giving you trouble and that you're thinking about in the shower. And it says you just, oh, you just almost, you get that refreshing feeling. That is the, the biggest thing I can say about it is that when you go, when you get that, that tra contrast from one temperature extreme to the other, especially when you finish off with cold, it just, you get that refreshing feeling. Like you just feel refreshed. I don't know. There's no other way for me to describe it. Try it. Try it with your, with, start, do your, like do your whole shower hot and then right before you're normally going to shut it off, just give yourself a good blast of cold. It's not going to hurt anything. You're not going to, it's not going to cause you pain. It's just going to be extremely uncomfortable. You're going to, you're going to create, you know, it, you got to give your make it cold enough so you create that blast of shock and that'll create that creates the and that is the thing that promotes a faster healing response in the body and though i mean you know there's it's not gonna i mean this isn't gonna be like you know some miracle cure that cures everything 
it's uh, I'm sure that a lot of things are going to require much more of a healing response than just a transition in temperature. However, anything helps, anything can work, and maybe there is some little things that maybe your body is fighting something so hard and it just needs that last little extra push, and bang, you do that contrast from hot water to cold, and you get promote that fast healing response in your body, and there it is, it gets that last boost, and it can get it can get rid of the dysfunction or whatever it was dealing with, or just or maybe it can keep something from progressing or. That's the thing. It's just it is just another weapon to help prevent things from getting worse. And maybe it's not it's not a miracle cure, but it's something that you can do. And it's if it's backed up with facts and science. It is a, an absolute 100% stone cold fact. Going from one temperature extreme to another promotes a faster healing response in the body. And that's what it, what it, what is better than a he, promoting a healing response in the body. So that's why I feel that showers are one of the most important things that we do every day. And, and that one of the things that we've been really neglecting in as, in as far as, you know, working with our mental and physical health. So, and, and so that's, that's the thing. If it's, I really feel it's extremely important for, you know, like normal people from day to day in day to day lives from just regular work and workouts, but for athletes and people in like contact sports and stuff, oh man, I think it is absolutely crucial. Like for me, if I were a rest, pro wrestler, or a football player, or something, or any, anything in a contact sport, like the, as soon as my game was over, I would be in the hot tub first. I would spend the appropriate time in there, and then I would bam, get out, boom, right in the cold tub to get that, promote that healing response in my body that has been. It's been you, those contact sports are basically like being in a car wreck every single time you go out there. So your body needs every kind of everything it can get to help itself so getting going from the hot tub to the cold tub would really promote that create that shock and promote a faster healing response and just give your body any kind of help it needs to help prepare itself after after the damage that you know you put it through so and I then as soon as I got out of that cold tub boom I'd be right in the shower so that I could get that blast on my head and because you know your head and your brain is the most important that's what and your body, it takes a lot of the damage in these contact sports. So it is, it is really crucial to be getting that contrast, that feeling of promoting that healing response, especially in your brain. There's some days I'm not even a contact athlete, and it's like I can feel the, I can feel my brain, the effects on my head. And sometimes it's like, and you, and it's, it's, uh, it's just I know it's, I know it's a positive response. I know it's doing good things. I can feel it. Sometimes if I've been work, done a really good workout at the gym and it's been a hard week at work, I can feel it when I hit that cold blast. I can just feel it all in my forearms and it's such a great positive feeling. And it's it's uncomfortable to hit the cold blast, but I mean once you get into it and it starts making you feel better on a daily basis and you you stay healthier and you stay stronger, you know you get you become you get to embrace it and you get to embrace the feelings that it that you know that wash you know just that refreshing feeling that comes over your entire body it's like there's no coffee no no like no energy drink that you don't get that feeling from anything but that but that shock that change from one temperature extreme to the other so i really feel that that contrast showers are really important and for me just you might not know like once you hit that cold blast my suggestion what i do is i just kind of push my push my hand into the into the blast of water to really get it on the shoulder both shoulders kind of twist around you know try and try and get it on get, do that side stretch get it on my lats and a little bit on the lower back same thing and then you know just get it all just get it all over yourself and then I usually do it in three levels I do a you know really cold to get that cold but not like you know crazy but cold enough to get that you know extreme extreme feel shock feeling from one temperature extreme to the another to the next then i go you know middle close to the end then right as i finish off i get that last blast for just a few seconds and then you know hammer it off and it's just that way you just get is you just get that that <clears throat> you get you get the positive effects of both uh, both temperature extremes. You get the positive effects from the heat, and you get the positive effects from the cold. Both have positive effects, and then you also get the you get the the really positive effect of go, go, promoting a faster healing response in the body, going from one 
temperature extreme to the other. So contrast showers are a really, really important thing, especially for contact athletes and people in sports. But I feel they're important, really important for everyone, and they can go such a long way to not only improving your physical health, but improving your mental health as well. Because just, and you know, try it, especially on a day, if you're, at, if you're in a bad mood or having a bad day, or try, if you're tired, try having a contrast shower, finishing off with that cold blast, and I guarantee you'll feel better and more refreshed and you're more wide awake and just easier, easier to kind of deal, deal with the day and everything, but. I can't stress enough how important contrast showers are. I've been, like I say, I've been doing them for over eight years now, and I really feel they're one of the things that help me stay strong and healthy. So, can't can't recommend them enough. And really, I really hope that you know everyone kind of adds them into their daily routine, daily routine if you haven't already. So that kind of finishes up all the main points that I wanted to. Just just the main things I feel you, people can focus on every day to try and promote. Uh, you know a strong physical health in themselves and just to keep themselves away from the pain and soreness and dysfunction that can come up with things we have to deal with and the things that we do in life so you know if you put all those things together i really think it creates the best chance for us to you know just to have best chance to have a long-term high quality of life and the best chance to be the best version of ourselves which is what i really feel is the meaning of life and you know we we're gonna that's the thing we're gonna we are gonna create the best version of this world i'm i'm fighting for it there are, i'm not alone there's other people fighting for it and we are gonna create it and we you want trust me you're want you're gonna want to be as close to the best version of yourself as you can in both you know both how you act and how you are and how you feel and how you're physically because because it is the best version of this world you're just not gonna understand how great and how much fun and happiness and joy and just good things are going to be in it and you're going to be want want to be able to participate you're not going to want to be i have to sit on excuse me you're not going to want to sit on the sidelines because your back is too sore or your knees don't work or your shoulders or just whatever you're not going to want to have to sit on the sidelines and not be able to participate and get the best out of the get the absolute maximum just the maximum experience you can out of the best version of this society, which we're going to create it. It's coming. It's coming soon. So, you know, definitely start working on these things as soon as you can. Uh, last couple, two little tidbits for that I've, that I also remember that I picked up during our time in school that I wanted to kind of just throw out. There are two little, they're just two little kind of, two little thing, little things that might like I say they're no magic cures, but they something that you can do to help prevent things and keep things from getting to a really a bad point. So uh, the first thing is always make sure your feet are pointed uh, straight. The, don't let them try and uh, rotate outwards. You know, like when you're walking, when you're exercising, when you're driving, sit and just always keep your feet pointed straight. Because when your feet rotate out, that starts to create a little impingement on the femoral artery, which is one of the main which is one of the main artery that goes to your heart. So you definitely you want to, you want to put as as little pressure on your heart as possible. So anything you can do to help that is something is definitely something you want to do. And so that is one of the things that you can do. Keep make sure your feet are always pointed straight. Don't let them rotate outwards because that starts to put a little impingement on that artery. So feet always pointed straight. Um, the next little tidbit. Now this one is for women, um, and this is pertains to high heels do not wear high heels regularly once in a while fine but do not wear them regularly because when you're wearing high heels with the way that they push you up and it'll tilt you a little bit forward that tilting fo up and forward it changes the angle the angle of things a little bit and it causes the lymph in your chest not to drain properly and start to pull and that and that is where a lot, sometimes breast cancer can start to form and and get and things like that so so wearing high heels prop high, once in a while not not as big of a deal but regularly is going to put you in that position too often and it's like but i mean like i say it's not wearing high heels every day is not going to it's not going to guarantee that you're going to get breast cancer or anything and not wearing them is not going to guarantee is that not wearing them isn't going to guarantee that you're not going to get it. It's just, it's just something that is, it is, a, it's a fact. It's true that it does change the angle that the lymph drains in and it can cause it to pool. So don't wear high heels regularly. Once in a while is fine. I mean, I know they're fashionable. I know they're, they're really nice, but on a regular basis, it's just, it's not worth it. So 
don't I would highly highly I would highly say would highly recommend not to not to wear them regularly just kind of save them for once in a while special occasions things like that and okay and so the last thing the last thing I want to talk about before it is to help maintain a strong physical uh, <clears throat> try and maintain your strong physical health is regular visits to a massage therapist not just saying that because i am one saying that because of how many people i help on a regular basis and how it's helped me myself um, massage that's the thing people just don't realize how many problems and pains that they deal with could be helped and move forward by massage like a lot of people look at massage as just kind of some floofy little rack relaxation thing that you know it makes you relax and it can make you feel better for a few hours or a couple days but it's not gonna it's not something that you actually consider when you have serious pain or injuries or dysfunction but honestly I've had people that were walking with canes and after regular after some regular visits and regular focus to a to certain areas and problems no more cane walking fine I'm not saying that's gonna happen all the time Sometimes there's you know s severe problems that go past muscular that because that caused people to use canes and nothing you can do about that. But sometimes there is things we can do and there are severe pains and dysfunctions that can be caused can be helped and fixed by massage. So and you know regular massage therapy visits will keep you from some of these severe dysfunctions and pains. And if you're going through some of these severe dif dysfunctions and pains, definitely try to visit a massage therapist because. It's not, you you might you might be dealing with all this for no reason. You could be, you know, a few visits to the massage therapist, and you could be, you know, just leave that leave that pain and dysfunction in the past and move forward to a, a really good quality of life. Something that you probably didn't even dream you could get after seeing a massage therapist. So, it's I, I really can't can't suggest it enough. It's you know fine as long as the massage massage therapist is good professional has all the right schooling you know it's definitely it is definitely a really really good idea to make regular massage vis visits every three to six weeks i think is a good kind of plan to stick to you know it's not too often to where it should break the bank at the same time it's not too far to where you know you're going to leave too too much time in between and allow you know dysfunction and pain to cr and soreness to creep up so I really suggest massage therapy, uh, regular regular massage therapy appointments, especially if you're dealing with pain and dysfunction. If you haven't tried it out, try it out. See if it'll help. I mean, it's really. I mean, it's 99 percent of the time, it's not going to make it worse. I mean, massage therapists they know when things are going to make it worse. So if you're in there and they you know they assess you and they see it's going to make it worse, they just won't do the massage. And that's why you choose a good professional therapist because they're going to make sure that. If if they can if they assess and they see this is not something massage is going to help they won't do the massage but if it is then they can you know get right into it and hopefully you know get you moving forward to being to leaving the dysfunction and pain behind and having a high quality of life as the best version of yourself so that kind of brings me to the end today I talk, I think I covered everything I wanted to talk about definitely gonna you know upload some videos of going through the actual some actual stretches myself just to help people and give. Give, give you a better idea of how they're done and what to do. Hopefully, you know, though, you're able to kind of get a good idea of these kind of foundational stretches that I gave that you can add into your regular routine. I think it's, I think everything will help, really help you go a long way towards, you know, having a really high quality physical health and as well as mental health and just, you know, doing all these things together will allow you to be the best version of yourself. It'll help, allow you to help us create the best version of the society and then enjoy the best version of society when we get there. So, um, so yeah, as I, I, think I, I think I hit every, everything I want to talk about. Hopefully, I explained everything properly. If any, as always, if there's any questions or anything, just uh, leave a comment below or get at me on Twitter, at NiceManCaesar. Thanks, everyone, for coming along for the ride. We'll see you soon down the road. Much love and God bless. Peace. short program portion of this team competition and we're going to be watching